An ionic bond occurs in a compound formed when a metal combines with a non-metal. Let's look at an example. Sodium is in group 1 and therefore has one electron in its outer shell. It can form a compound with a non-metal such as chlorine from group 7 with seven electrons in its outer shell. To make it easier to see what's going on, I'm going to change the colour of the electrons in sodium. To achieve a full outer shell and gain the electronic structure of a noble gas, the sodium needs to lose one electron. And to gain a full outer shell, the chlorine needs to gain one electron. Therefore, the sodium atom can donate an electron to the chlorine. As the sodium atom has lost an electron, it becomes positively charged. And as the chlorine has gained an electron, it becomes negatively charged. As both of these elements now have charges, we refer to them as ions. They will then attract each other, forming an ionic bond. Going back to the periodic table, you can start to see how this will occur with other elements. All the metallic elements in group 1 have one electron in their outer shell to donate, and in group 2 they have two electrons to donate. Due to the fact that it's easiest to donate electrons, the metal atoms will always form the positively charged ions. In group 7 it's easiest to gain one electron to form a full outer shell, and in group 6 elements need to gain two. As all the non-metals will gain electrons to form a full outer shell, they will always form the negatively charged ions. Another way you may see ionic formulas written out is shown below. This is a simplified version of what we looked at earlier, with the shell patterns written below rather than being drawn out in full. Thank <laughs> you.